Okay, episode 10 of Bad Philosophy with Rocket Mystery. I'm just going to do this one from bed. It's late at night. Um, couldn't sleep. So I'll just do an episode of Rocket Mystery for you. This one's going to um, cover his, his uh, views on anthropology and race. So in other words, complete bullshit. He who controls the past controls the future. He who controls the present controls the past. The quote I opened with was by none other than George Orwell, a man that, while having left-wing leanings, grew increasingly disillusioned with these values as he grew older. So why don't we just start out with a lie? George Orwell was a socialist, a democratic socialist. Um, he remained a democratic socialist till his death. Most of his work explicitly is socialist. Um, but... For some reason, his two most famous works are 1984 and Animal Farm, which are criticisms of the USSR. Both of them are disguised because at the time he wrote them, there was an alliance between the UK and the USSR. So that's why they're disguised as allegories rather than being just outright about the USSR. Um, but this idea that Orwell wasn't a socialist, or Orwell turned against socialism, or um, that Orwell's books are even arguing for capitalism, which I've seen people argue on Mis um, Rocket Mr. E's channel, that Orwell, despite being a socialist, makes some of the best arguments for capitalism, and no he doesn't. He argues against totalitarianism. He said his work was against totalitarianism, an argument for democratic socialism. It was this disillusionment that led to him writing two of the greatest books ever written, Animal Farm and 1984. Here is a quick look at the Wikipedia page for Orwell. As you can see, it says that not all, he was not disillusioned with socialism um, because of the USSR, but in fact became more committed to socialism, even after the USSR. Here is Rocking Mystery endorsing Wikipedia as a perfectly valid source to use um, while citing things. So I'm going by his own rules, even though I personally would not use Wikipedia in most cases. Anthropology is the study of humanity in the past and present. The reason why this field in particular is often cited and focused on by ideological revisionists is because it provides ammunition for them to justify pseudo-intellectual theories. So you basically know a great bunch of bullshit is coming up. It's funny for Rocket Mystery to call anyone a pseudo-intellectual. He's like the definition of pseudo-intellectual. That term is thrown around a lot. I've been called a pseudo-intellectual, though I've never, I was never ever called that ever in my life until I came on YouTube. It's because people who don't know what they're talking about want to discredit me for using actual intellectual rigor, so they'll call me a pseudo-intellectual. But to call someone a pseudo-intellectual, you're basically implying that you are an intellectual. Because only a true intellectual would be able to judge another person a pseudo-intellectual. Um, Rocking Mystery is a pseudo-intellectual. This entire series is about proving that. Unlike Rocking Mystery, I won't just state things. I will make arguments for them and give evidence for them. Where unfalsifiable evidence is unavailable, ideologies will develop strategies to fabricate this, revising anything that doesn't fit with a false hypothesis. Once this false hypothesis is in place, ideologues are trained to attack and shut down objective discussion using fallacious arguments such as argumentum ad hominem, or simply falsely citing fallacies to muddy and derail the pursuit of objective knowledge. That's a pretty huge accusation. I hope he has something to back that up. Otherwise, he'll kind of look like a jackass, won't he? Once you learn to recognize the signs of revisionism, you find that exactly the same talking points constantly recur, even when refuted, and it becomes very disturbing and frustrating to observe these circular arguments repeated like a mantra of preconditioned responses that brainwash and destroy critical thought. Now, Rockin' Mystery doesn't know what philosophy is, because he never makes an argument. Ever. I mean, not a real one. He just states things, and then he uses 
science or evidence, which are always these horrible links that um, make appeals uh, appeal to authority that has a false authority. So let's see what he does here. Both feminists and Emmental argue that the nuclear family is a relatively new manifestation of child rearing, also arguing that it never truly had any value outside of sentimental and falsely contrived ideals. The first flat out lie here is the suggestion that the nuclear family is something new. The nuclear family is a model based predominantly around the biological mother and father at the forefront of raising their offspring, bonded together through a commitment to each other, often through marriage. This model has existed since the dawn of human civilization and can be found throughout the world, including China, Europe and North Africa. Here is Wikipedia again, since that is a perfectly fine um, source to use by Rock and Mystery standards. I'm using it again. And you'll see what anthropologists actually think about the family. He seems to think that if the family is not biological, then that hurts his philosophy. Um, he tries to base everything on bio biology. So he's a hardcore biological determinist. So if anything's a social construct whatsoever, then he has to admit that social constructs exist and his opposition to things starts to erode. When ideologues that oppose the nuclear family argue against it, they often cite the extended family, in some way suggesting that other family members living with the nuclear family somehow means that this is a completely different family model. This is totally false in itself, but also false because the core argument behind the importance of the nuclear family is not that other family, like grandparents or cousins, cannot interact with the nuclear family, but that the mother and father being the primary carers and providers for their children is what creates a more stable setting and the parameters for advanced civilization to flourish. This argument can be demonstrated when we see that the nuclear family is by far the most stable setting for child rearing. And this has been statistically proven over and over again by objective and impartial data regarding fatherlessness. Here's Rock and Mystery's source. As usual, Rock and Mystery decided his source, went with its conclusion, and didn't read the actual report. What it says here is that poverty may play a bigger factor in the emotional problems that children growing up in a single parent household have than the absence of a father. Because Rocky Mystery doesn't believe in any kind of cultural factors and is a hard biological determinist, he probably wouldn't believe this. Here's a report on same-sex couples raising children. I've highlighted the portion that comes to the same conclusion. Because more same-sex couples are women who had children and are now raising them. Same-sex couples that adopt children have different results. The final lie feminists and Tao often rely on to argue against the nuclear family is based on interpreting scientific socialism, a theory inspired by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, where a method to predict future outcomes of social or economic events is set out by looking at past events. Like other anthropological revisionists, Marxists argue that the family is new given that ancient cultures had multiple family models where open sexual encounters and even incest were permissible. That sounds like a perfectly reasonable argument. What's he going to say about that? Again, this has been thoroughly refuted here given that child development always suffers immensely when both the mother and father do not pair bond and allow a K-type reproductive strategy to unfold, or given that the nuclear family has been widespread since the dawn of civilization. Okay, Rocket and Mr. E's citations actually once again contradict him. He has four citations, one of them is History for Kids, and another one talks about the Roman family, but it talks about having extended families. Now, he talks about before how anthropologists saying an extended family doesn't negate the nuclear family because extended family is just a nuclear, it's super nuclear family. It's got super sized. But 
he doesn't realize when anthropologists use that term nuclear family that it has a very specific definition so that's what they're talking about he's using this to say that there's only one family type and to destroy that family type his entire arguments are basically about his trying to say that there's only one kind of family if you don't have that family you're doing something wrong and you're harming your children so if you have an extended family I guess you're doing something wrong if you have uh, a non a non-traditional family like say gay couples who are raising kids um, or single mothers are doing something wrong the real problem is poverty everything I looked up and his own source says poverty is the real problem um, it's because single mothers because women make less and then um, they usually have to take care of the kids because the men scoot off and marry someone else or just take off and don't live up to their parental responsibilities women end up having to take the parental responsibilities um, so he's making a pretty good argument for a social safety net right here one of the things my channel focuses on is the dissection of the modern left since the 60s what's very clear is that this new left cares nothing for who gets trampled on along the way to the proletariat dream of a workers paradise what I find particularly shocking about the modern left is how pervasive Marxist ideas are within its doctrines. It's quite literally everywhere. And though leftists like to call themselves liberals, it would be better to consider this association to be akin to a parasite completely engulfing its host to the point that there's no longer any trace of the original ideology. So this is rock and mystery on race. Um... Is there anything resembling coherency anywhere in that? Um, I did cut off the introduction where he talks about race realism and why it would appeal to white people. S separating himself from race realism, saying I'm not a race realist, but I kind of see what they're talking about. Um, does, does that sound coherent? Like I really didn't take it out of context if you want to watch the original video. I have no idea what he's talking about in this part. What's central to any Marxist doctrine is class warfare, though the word class is really an interchangeable term for any group in society. Sometimes there are genuine issues in society that need addressing, and historically racism is certainly one of them. The fact is that white people must pay the price now for past imperialism given that they rearranged the world for hundreds of years. They moved people to different regions and colonized whole continents that had no concept of states. Now it's up to the human race to make the best of the mistakes of the past and humanely move forward. Leftists, however, want to blame, shame and perpetuate a victim culture for their social warfare. What's more, and like every other thing that Marxism touches, it suppresses the truth in the name of social constructivism. I think he's trying to argue that two wrongs don't make a right, which is the first time. Usually with the Rock and Mr. E's philosophy, he uh, argues that two wrongs do make a right. But here he seems to be like, oh yeah, white people actually did um, some horrible things. In some of his other videos, he actually tries to whitewash, no pun intended, um, a lot of the racial things of the past. Um, here he seems to be actually acknowledging them. But then he's like, oh, but there's no, you can't punish white people. And if there's nothing about punishing white people, it's about social justice. It's about people who have, in the United States, African Americans especially, are still feeling the effects of slavery and segregation generations later. And it hasn't really been that long. Like slavery, it's what, three, four generations away? really when you think about it um there are people alive today whose whose great grandmother or grandmother were slaves leftist dogma through pc culture is having a seriously detrimental effect on humans coexisting the recent initiative by ohio university to stop people dressing up in ethnic costumes is a perfect example if you want to dress up as a samurai, a geisha, a Mexican bandit, or even an Apache warrior, then you'd better think again. There's the 11-year-old boy expelled from school for suggesting that a black man looks like Barack Obama. Here, me and Rock and Mystery have a difference of opinion. 
I don't think cultural sensitivity is some kind of conspiracy theory to oppress white people. As for the story about the kid who got expelled, Rocket Mr. E's link is a YouTube video. So I followed the YouTube video, which would not be a good source anyway, but then it has a source, which is The Blaze, which is um, Glenn Beck's um, media company. No other media outlet covered the story. I googled it. I googled the names in the story. Um, no other outlet. There's no independent source that covered the story. Unless there's at least two sources covering a story, I don't have any reason to believe it. Um, especially if it's associated with Glenn Beck. Because Glenn Beck has a history of fabricating things. In fact, Glenn Beck and Rock and Mr. E are kind of similar. How about the NAACP getting a celebratory card removed from stores because it mentions a black hole in the same sentence as watch your back? Rock and Mr. E's source for this, once again, same YouTube video, only this time that YouTube video doesn't have a link. Now, is any random YouTuber a source? A source for like a, a claim about the news um, this guy like this is not a news source plus it has to be verified by more than one source even words like black sheep and blackboard have been put under the public spotlight as society struggles to step on the brakes of rationality within political correctness the word race also caused a major stir during the Hey Ruka affair. As is typical of leftists, they tend to take one extreme and swing completely in the opposite direction, namely their direction. It's certainly a dated idea to suggest that various groups of human beings that evolved from Homo sapiens are so different that they warrant being called races in their own right. But only a disingenuous fool would deny there are differences between groups of humans that evolve in different regions around the world. Yes, they're mostly aesthetic differences. There's not, you know, there's certain um, genetic disorders that are more common for people of certain ethnicities, things like that, very small things. Like we are all essentially the same, um, which is very small, differences that are mostly aesthetic um, there's no difference in like intelligence level or anything like that but I have a feeling he's gonna argue to the contrary for starters open your eyes and look the visual variations between Asians Europeans North Americans and other groups are blindingly obvious secondly Athletic differences are well documented between different groups of people. The Olympics clearly demonstrates this. When it comes to athleticism and other ethnic groups of people, nobody's doing research on this anymore. It was a topic people did research on, but nobody does anymore. And the reason is because it's widely considered to be cultural factors that we perhaps can't quantify and never will. But I'll give you an example. Um, in baseball is almost in the United States it's almost one-third Hispanic now the reason for that is not because Hispanic people are genetically better at baseball the Hispanic um, influx in baseball has happened because in these Latin American countries and in Cuba this is their way out of poverty for these children is to come to the United States and play baseball um, and Blacks have been on decline in baseball for a while. Fewer and fewer African Americans are playing baseball, preferring to play basketball or football, um, which it must be a cultural factor because there used to be a higher number of African Americans in baseball. It changed. That's just one sport. So obviously that tells you it's cultural factors. There's nothing genetic that makes you, based on your race, linked to your race, or your ethnicity that allows you to play baseball better. Now you might have genetic qualities that make you a better athlete, but that's not linked to your like skin color and aesthetic factors. 
That's ridiculous. Why would it, those two things be linked? Why would like the color of your skin and your hair color and things like that be linked to your athleticism? Kenyans and other East Africans thrive in long distance running. West Africans dominate in anaerobic sprinting events and Chinese people are well suited to gymnastics. You're a fucking racist. Many people casually accept these differences, realizing that some groups are born with certain traits, brought on by geographical development of human diversity. Leftists, on the other hand, want to use this as an excuse to wave their PC card, claiming that every little thing is a social construct or down to inequality. These things can be a factor. But leftists repeatedly deny cultural differences are sometimes biological. Or Once again, why would something like athleticism be linked to something like skin color? Or something like hair color? Aesthetic differences? The shape of your eyes? Like, why, why would those things be linked? It's since you understand biology so much, you have an answer, right? Or claim that acknowledging this can only ever lead to conflict, inequality and human atrocities like eugenics. When we look at every single species on the planet, there are always a number of subspecies, sometimes too many to count. This is well documented in taxonomy, so leftists denying the human race is any different is yet more social constructivism. The truly controversial issue involving human variation is of course intelligence. So Rockin' Mystery knows about as much about biology as he does about philosophy. There are species that have no subspecies. It is debated whether Neanderthal is a subspecies of Homo sapiens. It's actually a minority opinion, but it's debated. There is not a significant enough taxonomy difference genetically for races to be classified as subspecies. But but another thing Rocket Mystery doesn't get is we made up the taxonomy. It itself is a social construct. So in his attempt to debunk the entire idea of social constructs, taxonomy itself is a social construct made up by scientists. So these definitions are the definitions we culturally gave them. So we need to even talk about what a subspecies is before we can even get started. Are there differences of intelligence between certain cultural groups? My own personal answer is that you would think there are variations of some sort, if what we know about nature is anything to go by. However, and this is the key, as long as we live in a meritocracy where the best are able to succeed regardless of ethnic or social background, then none of these things are a problem. On another video, I believe it was a Rocket Mystery video, or maybe I've done it in multiple videos. This is essentially how libertarians should think. Um, I think I brought it up in the Ayn Rand, one of the Ayn Rand videos as well. This is how you would have to think to be a libertarian. Um, I've met some very nice, very intelligent libertarians who don't seem racist at all. But you would have to believe this stuff in order to be a libertarian. Um, and I just think that they haven't thought it through. Or they like the ideology so much that they haven't thought through the implications this means. If they're and there's also a lot of libertarians I talk to who I can tell think this way, they just don't want to say it. They know it's racist and they don't want to say it, but they believe it. Now Rock and Mr. E says it. And some libertarians will say it out loud. But when libertarians say stuff like this, or in case like the Ron Paul newsletters and things like that. This is what I always say. If you're a libertarian, you have to believe this because you can't explain if you're living in a meritocracy how disproportionately poor African Americans and Latinos are without resorting to racism. You can't explain it. If you believe in this meritocracy and you believe that 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 we have a meritocracy or even close to a meritocracy, you have to believe it. That's why sometimes libertarians will make excuses. They'll say like the, the welfare state is what keeps these people poor. Um, but there could be brilliant scientists, brilliant African-American scientists 
who never get the chance to go to school because they grow up in poverty. And I think this is part of the reason that the United States is falling behind in things like science. Because the opportunities, we're cutting off all the opportunities, we're grinding the poor into the ground. Um, worse and worse. What does concern me is that leftists are so subversive that they ignore the fact racial differences are positive, given that biodiversity allows the human race to thrive, adapt, and fight off natural threats like viruses and disease. All right, you lost me, Rock of Mystery. What does that have to do with your race thing? Biodiversity, yes, biodiversity is good. It's good in any species. Um, we have some species that are um, close to extinction because there's not enough biodiversity because they've been hunted to close to extinction and then the breeding population is now so small that they're now kind of inbred, which is a problem. Um, so yes, biodiversity is good. What does this have to do with all this stupid shit you're talking about? Absolutely nothing. Try to suppress this with some sort of collective fantasy of one humanity and we take a great risk. I personally don't want to prevent people from different cultures living together and I don't want to prevent people from moving freely around the world. But I am extremely cautious of the state defining what culture is. It's all about looking at the glass as half full or half empty. I choose to see racial differences as a good thing, and I don't need fear-mongering leftists to do this. Yopik is a perfect example of the extent leftists will go in their PC-shaming tactics, regularly calling people sexist, racist, or homophobic, and even recently claiming that Aristotle's axiom A equals A is similar to white nationalism. I explained this before, I think it was in the relativism episode. A equals A is not an axiom, it's a tautology. Um, Aristotle used it to present the non-contradiction principle. A equals A. It's a mathematical thing. Like, Rock and Mr. E uses it in a totally bizarre way. But he used it because that's how Ayn Rand used it. Um, it amazes me. I know that there are people who watch my videos who are fans of Ayn Rand. It amazes me. Some of them have philosophy education. She makes so many elementary mistakes in her work. That's why no one takes her seriously in academia. That's why she's almost never taught. Um, but Rock and Mr. E parrots them back um, as if there's something deep in A equals A. It's a tautology. It means nothing. Need I say more? Yes, because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't understand any of your points. I don't think you do either. Anyway, let's let's pretend Rocket Mystery is correct about this kind of biological determinism and how people evolve. What do we say about that sloping brow of his and those simian features what would that tell us about how evolved he is let's take a look at rock and mystery let's let's just let's just look at him and see what his aesthetic features tell us and let's just read all kinds of things about it let's go to him and say i can tell you're not very smart because of how your ears are shaped let's say things to him like that because that's basically what he's saying He's saying something as arbitrary as how, like, your skin color or um, how, like, certain parts of your body look, like aesthetic differences, are linked to intelligence. Like, because you have, like, a different eye shape because you're Asian. That's linked to intelligence. That's linked to being good at math and being a shitty driver all these stereotypes that aren't really true. Why would those be linked? There's, that's an arbitrary link. 